Hey guys, good morning, and welcome back to some more Armored Warfare news. It's Jaeger262, and today Armored Warfare has released a, I want to say preview, because I'm pretty sure a lot of this will change, but as of now, their actual plans for the new battle path, which they are calling Age of Rage. So just like we had Warriors of the Wasteland, this one is apparently an anarchist-themed event. But that's not really what I want to talk about. You see some artwork there for it. What I want to talk about is they've made significant changes to how the battle path will work. This article goes over all of them, so I encourage you to check out this article as I always do. But I'm going to try to break down the biggest changes really quickly. So first and foremost, this is a massive change. All missions will be possible to complete in both PvP and PvE modes. And so what that means is, and you can see in this paragraph right here, they are missions that have nothing to do with mode, everything to do with objective. And as they explain here, well, they'll break it down by a multiplier of 10. And what they mean is, for every mission that you see where it's destroy, say, 150 PvE or AI vehicles, you only have to destroy 15 player vehicles in a PvP mode. So destroy 200 vehicles with ATGM, which I think was a mission from the last battle path. If you don't want to play PVE and just grind, you can just destroy 20 players with ATGMs. However, the really interesting part, I forget where it is. They do the math here, somewhere in here, right here. You can mix and match. So if you have to do a mission where you have to kill 20 players, you are allowed to do 10 AI opponents and then just one player in any PvP mode, and that will count as a total of 20 kills for the mission. So not only is this an interesting change, but it adds a lot of flexibility to the way you play, and that's kind of the idea. However, you will not be able to complete any missions at Tier 1 or 2, and you cannot do it in the easy or challenging mode. So you have to play hardcore, and you have to play at least tier 3 and up. But that's not too bad. Now, the weird part of this, and I'm just going to scroll through some of the skins here, is that they've changed how you actually get vehicles and how you get the most coveted prize. Um, and it's all through battle coins. So if you remember last time, you moved up the level system, there's 100 levels, you get the Alte, you got skins, you got whatever. You had to pay through battle coins. And then you had missions to unlock the special vehicles. They flipped it, which is what they talk about here. You can now only get the reward vehicles by going up the levels, which just makes sense to me, but I also don't like that change because I don't know who, you know, if anybody did, but I personally didn't put any battle coins into going up the levels. I didn't care for the skins or the loot crates. I just cared about the vehicles. So I only put battle coins into completing the missions. And I'm guessing that's why my.com is changing it. So now you do have to get battle coins and you do have to go up that way. But there are personal missions and the personal missions are for skins like this one and other battle path themed skins. That's what the missions will be for. And I like that because for some of the missions, they were really weird and really hard in some odd ways. Like for the T-55 Enigma, it was just so grindy. Now, you don't have to do those missions and you don't miss out on any content, except for maybe skins and loot crates. So that's nice. However, they lowered the amount of battle coins that will be generated each time you go into battle. And you won't actually get like passive battle point or battle coins like last time you just played games you got battle coins and you did missions you got more battle coins they've changed how that works and they go into detail about that here with repeatable missions how the coins are going to work and why they did that and essentially what it is is just like you do contract missions that restart daily depending on how many contracts you complete there will be certain missions they give you a list of three key ones that they say they're going to have unlocked that you will be able to do i think it says yeah one here you can complete one every 24 hours you can complete a set of a preset of 20 for seven and then 
you can earn 2500 battle points or battle coins doing the other two and that counts as a third mission in and of itself and so essentially is you can play the daily contract missions outside of the battle path and you'll get battle coins for those you can replay battle path missions and get more battle coins or if you just stay and continue up the battle path and do nothing else there's an opportunity like mission three there to once you earn enough battle coins to get even more battle coins and so while it's not passive anymore and while it's not tied to multiple sets of missions it does sort of give players a more flexible avenue that's kind of the theme of this battle path you will earn less battle coins on average compared to the last one but you'll be able to earn them in more ways and you'll be able to unlock prizes in more ways depending on how your play style is the only thing i'm nervous about is early in the article they say to compensate well not to compensate but to aid this new battle path system there will be a lot of opportunities to get battle path boosters or battle coin boosters sorry and other battle coin missions and what i'm worried about is because they didn't talk about what the buy-in for this is i think last time you had to pay ten dollars just to get into the event and then thirty dollars and it got you 25 percent of the way through i don't know if they're still doing that or if now you will end up having to spend more money on more microtransactions than just making two large transactions so i'm a little bit weary about what the boosters are going to be and how they're going to give boosters to people now the final thing i wanted to talk about is just the compensation mechanism which i think is cool and then vehicles in general so last time we had the kia1 black panther introduced and we had the bmpt 17 sorry i couldn't remember both of those were loot crate vehicles you have to get hundreds and hundreds of parts to build them and then you got them you didn't get them to the missions you didn't get them on the battle path line they were just loot crates the bwp 2000 here is that vehicle for this one you cannot win this and you cannot buy it you have to unlock it through loot crates however the interesting part here is is once you reach the main prize you will then be able to spend your battle coins on loot crates containing the parts and so that could mean that just like the last time you can buy, just buy the loot crates and maybe win some through missions and you know if you're done with everything else then you can use extra battle coins to supplement it which is fine that's cool because if you don't want to spend a lot of money on loot crates and on gambling and if you're going to get it or not you can just use battle coins that you've already earned anyway however it could mean and i could be wrong that you have to get the tier 10 first and then the loot crate portion will unlock. I doubt that's the case, but if it is, that makes this tier eight vehicle extremely rare and incredibly hard to get. So I really don't think that's what they're gonna do, but it's possible. And then the last change to this battle path I wanna talk about is Q compensation, which I think is amazing. Essentially, if you're like me and you play on the North American server, any time past really 6 p.m. Eastern time, you cannot play pvp it's very rare you might get some games in the early morning hours but it's unlikely so if you are like me and you play in those areas where there's not a lot of players the longer you wait in the queue the more rewards you get so if you're playing on a peak time you can get into say a global operations match in like five minutes or you can get into a random battle in a minute you get say a certain amount of coins like 15 coins or whatever if you wait longer and say you're in a 20 minute queue and you finally get in that jumps exponentially to i don't know 30 coins i'm making up the numbers but that's essentially what it is you will get rewarded more for waiting longer and i think that's great so i'm going to watch this i don't know what these changes are really going to bring to the battle path they might be good and they look really good and they look really flexible but there could be some negative aspects to it so I will keep you posted. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. That does a lot to help the channel and help me continue to create this content. If you want more news, if you want to keep posted on just the Battle Path news itself, please subscribe to the channel. I always welcome the support. And as always, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.